Hi, John here from Water Depot. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, changing your filters in your membrane in a five-stage gold line reverse osmosis system. Uh, before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about what the, fil the, the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a filter wrench, which would come with your unit. Recommend some food grade silicone. A set of channel locks. Obviously I wouldn't use the ones that are dirty from your garage. You want ones that are clean and a pair of needle nose pliers. And as always, if you're, if you're working on these type of equipment, you always want to wear rubber gloves all the time. Um, we always wash our hands first, but even though we've washed our hands, there is still bacteria on our fingers that can contaminate the filter. So always wear rubber gloves all the time. Okay? That being said, let's carry on. So, um, you'll have a unit like this underneath your sink, uh, or it could be in your basement. Uh, but on your way into your unit, your inlet is here. You're going to have a ball valve on, on the inlet. So you're going to shut your, your ball valve off, which is going to stop the feed water pressure and the feed water flow to the unit and isolate the unit. Uh, you're also going to take your tank, which is under your sink, and you're going to shut your ball valve just to isolate your tank. Then you also want to take your faucet and you want to make sure you turn your faucet on. That way you're releasing all the pressure in the lines and you don't have any flow problems. And it's not going to be extremely difficult to undo your filter housings. The filter housings, if they're pressurized, you're never going to get them off. So you have to make sure you've completely depressurized the system. So once that's done, um, you simply start from one end to the next. These are all your pre-filters. So this is a new unit, so the filters aren't in the unit. But all, all you do, all you do to, to, to do this, you take your filter wrench. Um, once it's depressurized, you turn it, and the, the sump will loosen and come off. Okay? If it's full of water and full of fil uh, filter, it's going to be a little heavier than it is today. But you have to be careful that when you pop it off here, you're going to get a gush of water. So you want to make sure that you have a bucket nearby or even a bucket underneath it if you can to catch that water. And you also want to have a bucket because your filter is going to be sitting inside your filter housing like that and it's going to be full of water. So you're going to want to take, uh, what I always do is I'll take my rubber, rubber gloved hand, put a rubber glove on before you touch the filters, take my finger and I hold the filter, pour it into the, into the bucket and then I let the filter fall into the bucket so I'm not actually touching it. So you also want to have a look inside your filter, see if you got any fouling inside there. Using your rubber glove hand, you can always take a bit of paper towel, clean rag. Better to use paper towel than a rag because you can get um, um, material from the rag inside. Just take it and wipe it out. Okay? If there's a lot of stuff in there, rinse it. Um, just make sure that it's as clean as possible. Then you take your filter, pull your filter out, unload your filter packaging, take out your filter um, tag because a lot of times you find them in the ROs because people have forgotten. What I always do too, you see I've got a rubber glove on but I'm also only touching the plastic packaging. I'm not actually touching the filter because although you have a rubber glove on, you've now been inside there wiping things out. So still use the plastic. Push, the, push it in and then pull the plastic out like that. Now you've got a completely clean filter. It's no, hasn't been touched. Throw this in your garbage or in your bucket. Take your, um, take your silicone lubricant. Put a little bit, and this is only food grade, a little bit on your finger, and just put it inside on the O-ring. Yeah, see how I'm doing that? I just go around it with the O-ring. The main reason is for that is because if you don't lube your O-ring and then Next year you come to do this, or six months you come to do this, it's going to be harder to take the O-ring off because it's going to seal. Okay? So you just want to put a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just a little finger full. Gradually, lightly seat that in. You'll feel the filter will, will seat itself. And just turn it till the threads... Now the threads have engaged. So now you can turn it. Just turn it to the point where it engages. Like that. Take your, your filter wrench and just... It's hard when it's on the table, but it'll be on a, in your kitchen, under your kitchen sink. Just give it a little shot, just to engage that O-ring. You'll feel it. it. It gradually goes, and it stops. You don't want to come on to it. If you come on to it, you'll never get it off. you probably break your filter wrench, and then a year from now, when it comes time to change it, you're never going to get that off. Okay? So, um, that's my advice to you anyway. So, this one filter was now changed. So, now you move to the next housing. Same thing. 
I've pre-loosened these just so I didn't have to fight with them. Just reef on it, it'll turn. Uh, depending on if you lubed it last time, it might be easier. Just pull that off. Again, it'll have water in it and it'll have a filter in it. The filter will be sitting inside like that, full of water. So again, take your finger, put it on the filter, pour it into the bucket, and just let the filter fall into the bucket. Then you don't have to touch the filter with your hands. Same thing as you did with the last one. Have a look inside. If it's dirty, just put a rag in there, wipe it out, uh, rinse it, make sure it's clean. Um, then you, you take your rubber gloved hand, again, again, same thing. Sometimes they're difficult to get out because they, they push them inside the filter. Just peel the plastic off, leaving a little bit on the end. Take your little sticker out because you don't want that to end up in there. Just give yourself that little piece at the end, okay? And if you want, if you're really, and see what happens, you see that? Sometimes that'll happen. You want to take that out. You don't want, it's the end of the day, if it's in there a year from now, it's not going to be a game changer, but you want to take it out because you don't want anything to foul. So your filtered housing should look like that. Um, probably easier at this point than doing it with a filter in it. Put a little bit of lube on your finger. Just run it around the O-ring, right? Just like that. You can probably see it shiny, right? Take your filter, don't touch the filter, keep the plastic, put it in, and then pull the plastic out. And it comes out. Now you haven't touched the filter at all, you've already lubed it. So now you take this, same, same thing as last, just take it, let it seat, it'll seat itself, you'll feel it, it'll pop in, and then you'll, you'll feel the, the thread engage. Now it's engaged, you can just turn it, turn it till it's hand tight, right? Take your filter wrench and just again give it that little, that little quarter turn just to engage the O-ring, okay? Uh, so that's your filter two done. Now yeah, let's turn it this way, sorry guys, so you can see it a little bit better. So filter one, filter two are done, okay? So now we're on to filter three, same process. You just, let's turn that, yeah, so you, if it's on, you just turn it and it de-engages the, the O-ring. I'll again allow it to come off. Support it, because if it comes off with water, it's going to come off if you're not holding on to it. And then you end up potentially hitting your, your uh, housing on the concrete floor and you can crack it, okay, if it's in the basement. So again, take a look inside, see if it's dirty, wipe it out, rinse it out, all those things, and take a little bit of silicone. Just That's way too much, but... You just need a little bit, right? If you have too much, it's not going to hurt things. But so then you have your O-ring lubed, um, and then the same thing as last time. Pop your plastic off. You notice I have one hand that's rubber gloved and one hand that isn't. As long as the hand that has the rubber glove on it is the only thing that touches the filters, uh, you're okay. It gives you the ability to do things a little better with one hand without the glove. So again, I've already lubed the O-ring. Take your, your filter, slide it in, make sure that it seats, and then pull the plastic off. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get the plastic out, but throw that in the garbage and you're ready to go. So now that filter again, nothing's touched it. It's completely clean. Take it, seat the filter seat the, the thread so that it spins. Once you got it started, it should spin freely like that. Hand tight, give it a little shot just to engage the O-ring. You'll feel that O-ring, it'll engage. It'll get, it'll, it, you'll feel it almost like, and it'll, it'll tighten. So at this point, you've changed all your filters, okay? Um, the only two things that are left is your post tank polisher and your membrane itself. The post tank polisher is very, very simple. Um, depending on the one you buy, uh, if you buy the one that has the EZ, which is this one here, it's an AIC-10 EZ. The EZ means it's got the EZ Connect, Quick Connect fittings on the, on the side of it. So you want to make sure that you order, you get one with an EZ, okay? If you need, uh, got one with an EZ, all you do is you push the little, the little um, tabs in, pop this out, take the little blue clip, so there's these little clips, you can probably see that little clip there, that's a retention clip. That's just designed to hold that, the, the collar that you're going to depress from depressing on its own. So there's a little white collar here, 
you push that in and pull that out. Okay? Remember to look, you'll see on here, on this filter is a flow direction. When you put your new filter in, there's a flow direction on this filter. You got to make sure you put it in the same flow direction that you took it out or you're not going to get any water. Okay? Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to change this one in, uh, exactly. It's the same unit. You see there's flow this direction and flow this direction, both in the same direction. So you take the plastic off this, you take this out, take this one off, you just pull it off, pull it off. <laughs> These are, they just sit on there. Take your new filter, you put your new filter in, make sure the flow's in the direction it was supposed to be. Quite simply, you take your connections that you just had, this connection, you just take this connection and you pop it in. Pop it in, make sure it's seated. Take your blue clip, just pull it forward so you can see that that collar comes forward and stick your blue clip in the collar to lock it in. Not all of them will have blue clips. Sometimes um, you'll lose the blue clips over time. It's not a game changer if you don't have one. You just need to make sure that it's seated. Then you take this other side, do the same thing, push it in, make sure it's seated, and there you have it. You've changed your, your post carbon polisher. Okay? So the next part of this is probably the, the most difficult slash most, well, the most difficult part to, to change your membrane. This is usually where you'd have a set of channel locks. You probably need a bigger set of channel locks than this, but you can get a grip to turn it with a smaller set. What you have to do is you have to turn the, at the end of this is a cap. That cap threads off and inside here is one of these. This is an RO membrane, okay? So to be able to change this properly, you're gonna have to take this clip off at the end, right? And push that out. So now you can get, so what you've done is just what they did with the last one. Taken the blue clip out, let me get it with my fingers, the blue clip out, and you've pushed in this, these, this collar and you've pulled this fitting out, okay? So now this is free. You can actually, you've got it connected to this side, but now this is free. So you can take your hand and just unloosen this, and it'll, it'll come out. Once you've de-engaged the O-ring, it'll come out easier. You see there's an O-ring on the top of it, and it's just a cap, okay? So what you do from here, the best way, you can see inside, there's the membrane. You can see it with a little, little tab on the end. So if this membrane's been in a while, it's going to be really difficult to get out. So, what I always suggest, because you, you're, you're using tools that you don't know how clean they are, as ridiculous as this might seem, put a rubber glove across your, your wrench, grab the end of this with your wrench, and pry it out. Sometimes they're difficult to get out because they've been in for a little while. It will come, trust me. It's just a matter of time. If you have trouble with it, you can also use a pair of needle nose. Same thing, put your rubber glove on it, and then there's a little hole, and you can pull it up. And it disengages, okay? The reason it's difficult to get out is there's a little bit of uh, there's a rubber gasket here that seals it in. So if it's been sitting in there for a year, it could be very difficult to get out. But as long as you cover your tools with a rubber glove, you're, and at the end of the day, this is being thrown out. What you don't want to contaminate is in here with your, with your tool. So take this guy out. There's going to be water in here. So you're going to pour it in your bucket. You're going to take this guy, and you're going to throw it out. Then you're going to take this new membrane, and some of them are black, some of them are blue, some of them are green. The color doesn't matter as long as it's the same size and it looks the same. Uh, that will fit in this housing. So again, with this one, it's going to go in with this end first. So you want to cut, rip this end, right? Again, you don't want to touch it. Put this end in. Take the plastic off gradually. And then take your rough plastic and push it in. Now you've now just replaced that, that membrane. You find your cap, put a little bit of lube on the O-ring, just like the rest of them, right? Because if you don't, and it's been on for a year, and 
we all know that we tend to tighten things more than we should. So this will just make sure that next time you come to do this, it's easier. So now you take your cap, put your cap back on. You'll feel it when it engages on the O-ring. Tighten it as far as you can tighten it. Only hand tight, but you want to get it all the way down to the nut. So you want, if you have a bigger set of channel locks, be very gentle because you can crack it. I'm not going to force it right now because I don't want to crack it. But take a little your your channel locks and just snug it up so that it's snug against the plastic. That will engage everything and you won't have any leaks. So that's your membrane changed. So now all you have to do is put everything back together. So obviously we have these little uh, brackets. These brackets go on to the membrane and hold everything. You have this piece here. And you just have to move this so that it, it sits where it needs to be. And you're going to take this piece, you're going to put it back in here, and you're going to push it until it engages, right? Then you're going to take your blue clip, blue clip, and you're going to put your blue clip back in the collar so that it doesn't disappear. Um, at the end of the day, like I said, if your unit doesn't have the blue clips because it's older unit, it's not the end of the world. You can go buy them from a water depot, they can get the clips for you. A lot of times they may not have them in stock, because it's not an item that we sell a lot of, but they can certainly get them for you. So, at this point you've changed all your pre-filters, your post-filter, your membrane, and your post-carbon, post-tank carbon. So you've done all the work you needed to do now. So, now you make sure everything is tight, tight and snug, but don't over-tighten it. So your unit will be inside your, uh, your kitchens, under your kitchen sink, now completely empty with new filters. So what you want to do then is you want to take your feed line and you want to turn your feed water on. Turn it on very slowly so you don't get water hammering <coughs> through the unit. Just slowly let it happen. And you'll feel it'll pressurize and it'll, it'll, um, it'll pressurize and stabilize. And then there won't be any water rushing, it'll just be good. At this point, what I would suggest is check for leaks. Make sure that all your fittings are pushed in, there's nothing dripping out, there's no leaks around here, um, and let it sit for a couple of minutes and just watch it make sure there's no leaks. If, say, you get a little drip here, it could be just because this, this fitting isn't all the way in. There's a little O-ring inside, and if you push it in and you don't go past the O-ring, it can still leak. So if that happens, you get a little drip, you just push it in hard and you'll feel it go, mm, and it'll pass. And then you won't have any leaks. Once it's pressurized, it's hard to do that. So if you do have leak, you want to depressurize like you did before, open the tap, and then push it in, and then repressurize, right? Usually it doesn't happen, but once in a while it might. Um, so once you got this pressurized and it's stable and there's no leaks and everything's good, then what I would recommend at this point then is you open your faucet, allow your faucet to gurgle. It'll go and gurgle because there'll be air coming out, and you'll get a shot of like black water and it'll start to produce. Once it starts to produce you can leave it running, turn, open your tap, your tank, and then the water flow from the tank will come out of the faucet. As soon as you know that's happening, close your faucet. Just allow it to, to pressurize and to pressurize with the new water. And then let it give it about 10 minutes and open it. Let it run. Let it run until it runs dry. Close it again. Let it build for half an hour, 45 minutes. Let that tank fill. Go open it, let it run until it runs dry. Do that three times. The reason for that is you're now taking the dust off the filters out of your tank and you're going to get better quality water. Once you've done that three times and everything's stable, I would go back under your sink and check for leaks. Make sure that you don't have any leaks, no problems, no issues, no, nothing's happening and it's stable. Turn your faucet back on, you see you have lots of water and you're completely done. And then you take all your filters, throw them all away and you're good to go for another year. Okay. Thank you for your time. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, again, it's John from Water Depot. Thanks for visiting with me today.